day everyone today we are going to talk about the 1987 constitution so this constitution is the eye opener for the issues currently faced by filipinos now we have the learning outcomes at the end of this lesson you should able to tell how various issues in the philippine history have transcended over time appraise the role of the current government in providing solutions to the discussed issues faced by Filipinos, and propose recommendations or solutions to present-day problems based on your understanding and future scenarios. So, are you ready? Let me introduce to you the reporters. We have Ethan Genra Kepo. Yours truly, Justin, John Patrick, Richmond, Heronimo, Mary Grace, Mary Joy, Lucky, John Lloyd, Jid Mark, and Shina. So first, who is a Filipino? According to Wikipedia, Filipino are the people who are citizens of or a native to the Philippines. Typically, they are speaking either Filipino and or English and or other Philippine languages. But according to the Philippine Constitution, a Filipino is a natural born citizen of one or both parents who are Filipino citizens at the time of birth. Now, before we go to the content of the 1987 Constitution, let's proceed to the preamble. A preamble is derived from the Latin word preambular, which means to walk before. It is an introduction to the main subject, and it is the prologue of the Constitution. So, in the preamble, there is a certain text written. So, I will read it to you. It says there, We, the sovereign Filipino people, imploring the aid of Almighty God in order to build a just and humane society, and establish a government that shall embody our ideals and aspirations, promote the common good, conserve and develop our patrimony, and secure to ourselves and our posterity the blessings of independence and democracy under the rule of law and the regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality and peace do ordain and promulgate this constitution article 1 national territory archipelago is derived from the greek word pelagos meaning sea it has been defined as a sea or part of the sea studded with islands often synonymous with island groups or as large group of islands in an extensive body of water such as sea. Archipelagic doctrine is the principle that it is an integrated unit that everything within it compromises the archipelago. So the Philippines is considered as archipelago because it Philippines is composed of many islands. Unclass maritime and airspace zones. There are five parts according to the zone, namely internal waters or archipelagic, territorial sea, contiguous zone, exclusive economic zone, and high seas. Archipelagic doctrine. The archipelagic principle, however, is subject to the following limitations. We have respect for the right of the ship and other states to pass through the territorial as well as archipelagic waters. Second, respect to the right of innocent passage. Third, respect for passage through archipelagic sea lanes 
subject to the promulgation by local authorities of pertinent rules and regulations. Article 3 Bill of Rights Bill of Rights is a declaration and enumeration of all persons' rights and privileges which the Constitution is designed to protect against violations by the government or by an individual or groups of individual. It is a character of liberties for that individual and a limitation upon the power of the state. There are three great powers of the government. The police power, the power of environment domain, and the power of taxation. Classes of rights, the, the natural rights and the constitutional rights. Natural rights are rights possessed by every citizen without being granted by the state for they are given to man by God as a human being created to his image so that he may live a happy life. While constitutional rights are rights which are conferred and protected by the Constitution. Since they are part of the fundamental law, they cannot be modified or taken away by the lawmaking body. Classification of constitutional rights The political rights, civil rights, and the statutory rights. Political rights are rights of the citizens which give them the power to participate directly or indirectly in the establishment or administration of the government. While civil rights are rights which law will enforce at the instance of private individuals for the purpose of securing to them the enjoyment of their means of imprisonment for non-payment of debt or a poll tax. And last, the statutory rights are rights which are provided by laws promulgated by the lawmaking body and consequently may abolish by the same body. Article 3, Section 1 No person shall be depraved of life, liberty, or property without the due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of the laws. Due process of law as defined by Daniel Webster refers to the process as a law that hearts before condemns, which proceeds upon inquiry and renders judgment only after trial. Person embraces all persons within the territorial jurisdiction of the Philippines without regard to any difference of race, color, or nationality, including aliens. Life as protected by due process of law means something more than mere animal existence. Liberty as protected by due process of law denotes not merely freedom from physical constraint. It also embraces the right of, the right of man to use his faculties with, with which he has been has been endowed by his creator's subject, only to the limitation that he, he does not violate the law or the rights of others. Property as protected by due process of law may refer to the thing itself or to the right over a thing. Equal protection of law is the right of person to be treated equally before the law bought in the privilege, privilege conferred and liabilities imposed. Article 3, Section 2 the right of the people to be secured in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures of whatever nature and for any purpose shall be invaluable and no search warrant or warrant of arrest shall be issued except upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person of or things to be seized search warrant is an order in writing issued in the name of the people of the philippines signed by judge and directed to a peace officer commanding him to search for certain personal property and bring it before the court Personal property be, property to be seized. Subject of the offense, stolen or, embez, or embezzled and other proceed or fruits of the offense, used or intended to be used as the means of committing an offense, requisites for valid search warrant or warrant of arrest. It must be issued upon probable cause. 
the probable cause must be determined personally by the judge himself. Such determination of the existence of probable cause must be made after examination by the judge of the complainant and the witness witnesses he may produce. And the warrant, warrant must particularly describe the place to be searched and the personal things to be seized. Probable cause is, me, is meant such facts and circumstances antecedents to the ish, issuance of warrant sufficient in themselves to induce a cautious, cautious man to rely upon them and act in persuasion theory. When search and seizure may be made without warrant by Costales 2011, when there is consent, number one, when there is consent or wa waiver, that is, if a peace officer has been granted consent to enter a premise of another for the purpose of search and seizure, number two, where search is an incident to, to all lawful arrest, say a pickpocket caught if flagrante delicto or caught in the act can be searched for his loot. Number three, when an officer making the search has reasonable cause to conduct in a ve vehicle believed to containing contraband or forfeited goods because the, ve the vehicle can get away before a warrant can be secured. Number four, when the possession of articles prohibited by law is disclosed to plain view, seizure can be made if an offender is seen in plain view holding, for example, for example, a deadly weapon. Weapon. Number five, as an incident of, of inspection, supervision, and regulation in the exercise of the police of power. Section nine, such as inspection of restaurant by health officer. Of, factor, of factories by labor inspector, etc., the same thing may be said for inspection of books for accounts by revenue examiners. Num and number six, routinary researches usually made at the border or at sports of entry in the interest of, of national security and, of, and for the proper enforcement of custom and immigration law. Arrest warrant is command in writing to arrest a person designated to take him into the custody in order that he may be bound to answer for the commission of an offense. Arrest without warrant A peace officer or a private person may without a warrant arrest a person in the following instances. Number one, when in his presence the person to be arrested has committed, is actually committing or, as, or is attempting to commit an offense. When an, number two, when an offense has just been committed and has personal knowledge that the person to be arrested has committed it. Number three, when the person to be arrested is at a is a prisoner who has escaped from a penal establishment. Section three, section three. The privacy of communication and correspondence shall be inviolable except upon lawful order of the court or when public safety or order requires otherwise, as prescribed by law. Any evidence obtained in violation of this or the proceeding section shall be inadmissible for any purpose in any proceeding. Right to privacy is the right to be left alone. Right of a person to be free from undesired publicity or disclosure and as to, as to the right to live without unwarranted interference by the public in matters with which the public is not necessar necessar necessarily concerned. Article 3, Section 4 No law shall be passed abridging the freedom of speech, of expression, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government for redress of grievance. Freedom of expression implies the right to rely, utter, and publish whatever one places without restraint. The freedom of its speech and expression and of the press is a safeguard against repressive measures by the states. The constitutional guarantee of the freedom of expression is essential in the stability of a free society. Article 3, Section 5 No law shall be made respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise Therefore, the free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship without discrimination or preference shall forever be allowed 
no religious test shall be required for the exercise of civil or political rights. Religious freedom is the right of man to worship God and to entertain such religious views as appeal to the individual conscience without dictation or interference by any person or power, civil or ecclesiastical. Religion in its broadest sense includes all forms of beliefs and the existence of superior rules of conduct with the future state of rewards or punishment. Article 3, Section 6 The liberty of abode and of changing the same within the limits prescribed by law shall not be impaired except upon lawful order of the court. Neither shall the right to travel be impaired except in the interest of national security, public safety, or public health as may be provided by law. Right of abode and travel is the right of a person to have his home in whatever place chosen by him and that thereafter to change it at will and go where he please he pleases without interference from any source. Article 3 section 7 The right of the people to information on matters of public concern shall be recognized. Access to official records and to documents and papers pertaining to official acts, transactions or decisions as well as to government research data used to news as basis for policy development shall be afforded the citizen subject to such limitations as may be provided by law. Right to information on matters of public concern is a political right of the people. This gives the people the right to participate in the affairs of the government. A public office is a public trust. Article, Article 11. The people have the right to know what is happening in the government. All records and doc documents pertaining to government affair, affairs must be available to the people except on matter when security of the state is involved. Article 3, Section 8. The right of the people including those employed in the public and private sectors to form unions, associations, or societies for purposes not contrary to law shall be not be abridged. Right to form association is the freedom to organize or to be a member of any group or, or associa association, union, or society and to adopt the rules which the members judge most appropriate to achieve their purpose. The general rule is stated in Section 8 is that the people have the right to form unions, associations, or societies. The exception is when the organization is contrary to law that a citizen is barred from joining union or organization. A union is an alliance or confederation of people, parties, or political and for mutual interest or benefit. Article 3, Section 9 Private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. Just, compen just compensation, the full and fair equivalent of the property taken from its owner by the expropriator. It conveys the idea that the equivalent to be rendered for the property to be taken shall be real, substantial, full, and from. Article 3, Section 10 No law impairing the obligation of contracts shall be passed. Obligation of a contract is the law or duty which binds the parties to perform their agreement according to its term, term or intent. If the agreement is not contrary to law, morals, goods, customs, and public orders, or public policy, impairment means to be diminish or weaken. Obligation means an agreement by which one person is bound to do something for another. A contract is a written agreement. The law of obligation of contract is the body of rules, which deal with the nature and sources of obligation or duty. This, is spe this is specific provision of the Constitution is stated that there should be no law that would impair or damage the obligation of contracts. Article 3, Section 11 Free access to the courts and quasi-judicial bodies and adequate 
legal assistance shall not be denied to any person by reason of poverty. Article 3, Section 12. Any person under investigation for the commission of an offense shall have the right to be informed of his right to remain silent and to have competent and independent counsel, preferably of his own choice. If the person cannot afford the services of a counsel, he must be provided with one. These rights cannot be waived except in writing and in presence of counsel. No torture, force, violence, threat, intimidation, or any other means would vitiate the free will shall be used against him. Secret detention places, solitary, incommunicado, or other similar forms of detention are prohibited. Any confession or admission obtained in violation of this or section 17 hereof shall be admissible in evidence against him. The law shall provide for penal and civil sanctions for violations of this section, as well as compensation to and rehabilitation of victims of torture or similar practices and their families. Article 3, Section 13. All persons except those charged with offenses punishable by reclusion perpetual by with ev when evidence of guilt is strong shall before conviction be bailable by, by sufficient sureties or be released on recogn recognizance as may be provided by law. The right to bail shall not be impaired when, even when privilege of the writ or habeas corpus is suspended. Accessible bail shall not be required. Article 3, Section 14. Number 1. No person shall be held to answer for a criminal offense without due process of law. Number two, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be presumed innocent until the contravy is proved and shall enjoy the right to be heard by himself and counsel, to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him, to have a speedy speedy, impartial, and pub public trial, to meet the witnesses face to face, and to have compulsory process to secure the attendance of witness, and the production of evidence in his behalf. However, after arraign arraignment, trial may, trial may proceed notwithstanding the absence of accused, providing that he has been duly notified and his failure to appeal to appear is unjustifi unjustifiable. Article 3, Section 15. The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended except in cases of invasion or rebellion when public safety requires, requires it. Article 3, Section 16. All persons shall have the right to a speedy disposition of their cases before all judicial quasi-judicial or admin administrative bodies. Yes. Article 3, Section 17 No person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. At trial, the Fifth Amendment gives a criminal defendant the right not to testify. This means that the prosecutor, the judge, and even the defendant's own lawyer cannot force the defendant to take the witness as stand against their will. Article 3, Section 18 1. No person shall be detained solely by reason of his political beliefs and aspirations. 2. No involuntary servitude in any form shall exist except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted. Involuntary servitude exists as a punishment as forced labor and STP or OTC CWTS are not grounds for involuntary servitude. Instead, these are faculties of the state that are citizens that incurred of us duties and responsibilities. Article 3, Section 19 1. 
Excessive fines shall not be imposed, nor cruel, degrading, or inhuman punishment inflicted. Neither shall the death penalty be imposed unless for compelling reasons involving heinous crimes. The Congress hereafter provides for it. Any death penalty already imposed shall be reduced to reclusion perpetua. 2. The employment of physical, psychological, or degrading punishment against any prisoner or detained, or the use of substandard or inadequate penal facilities under subhuman conditions shall be dealt with by law. Right against excessive fines, courts will be justified in declaring a fine prescribed by statute by statute excessive only when it is clearly so, considering the nature of the offense, the offense of the ability and the ability of the person punished to, be, to pay the fine. Right against cruel, degrading, or inhuman punishments. It can be said that punishments are cruel and are inhuman when they involve torture and lingering death, such as burning alive, mutilation, starvation, drowning, and other barbarous punishment. Punishment is degrading when it brings shame and humiliation to the victim or exposes him to contempt or ridicule or lowers his dignity and self-respect as a human being. Imposition of the Death Penalty Section 19 Abolishes the death penalty. It shall not inflict it unless Congress decides to reinstate it. Death penalty is already imposed upon the effectivity of the new constitution were automatically commuted to reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment. Article 3, Section 20 No person shall be imprisoned for debt or non-payment of a poll tax. This provision is enshrined in our constitution as one of the rights of an individual. This provision prohibits the enactment of a law requirement a leasing non-payment of debt or poll tax. Article 3, Section 21 No person shall be twice put in jeopardy of punishment for the same offense. If an act is punished by a law and an ordinance, conviction or acquittal under either shall constitute a bar to another prosecution for the same act. The guarantee protects against perils of a second punishment means no one can be charged twice for the same or, an, or identical offense. Article 3, Section 22 No ex post facto law or bill of attainder shall be enacted, which means that it is unconstitutional for the government to criminalize an act that was legal when it was committed. Article 4 Citizenship, the Articles of 1987 Constitution Section 1. Citizenship, term denoting membership of a permanent citizen in a political society or community called the state. Citizenship is the status of being a member of a body politic owing allegiance to and, and entitled to reciprocal, reciprocal protection from its government. Citizen, a member of a democratic community who enjoys full civil and political rights. Citizen is a person with full membership in the body politic upon which rests the primary responsibility of organizing and controlling the nation. As such, a citizen enjoys full civil and political rights, political rights and is accorded protection inside and outside the territory of the state. General ways of acquiring citizenship First, voluntary method, naturalization, cessation, contrast, or treaty. Second, Involuntary method by birth, place of birth, or by blood relationship. Section 2. Kinds of citizen. First, natural born, those who do not need to perform any acts of acquiring his Philippine citizenship. Natural born citizens are those who are citizens of the Philippines from birth without having to perform any act acquired or per 
or perfect their Philippine citizenship. Second, naturalized. Those who were originally citizens of other country but who by an intervening act have acquired new citizenship in a different country. Section 2. Citizenship by birth. First, just solely or lose the law of the soil citizenship determined by the place of birth. Second, just second is the law of the blood citizenship determined by blood relations. Section 3 and Section 4. Expatriation, the voluntary loss or renunciation of citizenship. Expatriate are those who voluntarily lost or renounced their citizenship. Repatriation, the requisition of one's nationality by taking the necessary of oath of allegiance. Repatriate are those who return to the Philippines and causes requisition of his Philippine citizenship. Loss of citizenship, first by naturalization in foreign country. Second, by express renunciation of citizenship. Third, by subscribing to a note of allegiance to support the constitution or laws of a foreign country. Fourth, by rendering services to or accepting commission in the armed forces of a foreign country. Fifth, by cancellation of the, of the certificates of naturalization. Sixth, by having been declared by competent authority at the sector of the Philippine Armed Forces in time of war by competent authority. Requisition of citizenship first by naturalization. A naturalization may be applied for a former Philippine citizen who loses citizenship under any of the first ways. For example, Pedro was a Filipino become a naturalized citizen in another country and as a result he lost his Philippine citizenship. If he applies for naturalization and later on the court gave him a decree or naturalization, then he requires his Philippine citizenship. Second, by direct act of Congress. The Congress can also reinstitute by means of a law of citizenship to those who lost it. Third, by repatriation. Repatriation is accomplished by taking the necessary oath of allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines and then registering the same in the proper civil registry and in the Bureau of Immigration. This is available this is available to women who have lost their citizenship through marriage to aliens. Those who lost their citizenship on account of economic and political necessity not otherwise disqualified by law and deserters of the armed forces of the Philippines. Section 5. Dual allegiance. The continued allegiance of the naturalized natural nationals to their mother country even after acquiring Filipino citizenship. Dual, dual, dual allegiance happens when a naturalized citizen of the Philippines maintains his allegiance to his country of origin. Dual, citizen, dual citizenship The possession of two citizenship by an individual. Dual allegiance is different from dual citizenship. Dual citizenship happens when an individual is a citizen of two countries because the laws of, because the laws of both countries confer upon him membership to their state. Article 5. Suffrage. The right to vote. Scope of suffrage. Number one. Election means by which people choose their officials for definite and fixed periods to whom they entrust. For the time being as the representatives, the exercise of powers of the government. Number two. Plebiscite refers the vote of the people expressing their choice for, a, for or against a proposed law or enactment submitted to them. Number three. Re referendum pertains to the submissions of a law or part there of passed by the national or local legislative body to the voting citizens of a country for their rap ratification or approval. Number four. Initiative is the process whereby the people directly propose and enact laws. Number five, recall is method by which a public officer may be removed from office during his tenure or before the expiration of his term by a vote of the people after registration of a petition signed by a required percentage of voters. 
Qualification of voters. Number one, a citizen of the Philippines. Number two, not otherwise disqualified by law. Number three, at least 18 years old. Number four, have re resided in the Philippines for at least one year and in the place wherein he proposed to vote for at least six months presi presiding direction. The three branches of the government, namely executive, legislative, and judiciary. The Philippine government is a republican, presidential, unitary, decentralized, and constitutional government. Democracy resides to the sovereign Filipino citizens. This is not a machine that goes itself. By 1987, Constitution provides a presidential system. As such, three branches of the government were installed, executive, legislative, and judiciary, with separation and balance powers, which provides check and balance between and among three equal branches. When we say Republican, Meron tayong tinatawag na election where people would, would choose kung sino yung leader na gusto nilang maglead sa kanila. Presidential because we call the highest leader as the president. The rule applying branch that applies or executes the laws is the executive branch, the branch naman na the rule-making branch that enacts or makes laws are or is the legislative branch, and the rule-adjudicating branch that interprets or applies the laws in cases of conflict or dispute between the state and individuals, or between branches of the government and between individuals, is the judiciary branch. Article 6. Legislative Department. Legislative Department or Legislative Power is the authority to make laws and to alter or repeal them. It is vested by the Constitution to the Congress of the Philippines, which shall consist of a Senate and a House representatives. Another is that it is vested to the people of the Philippines through the provisions on initiative and referendum. Next, how a bill becomes a law. So there are 12 steps on how a bill becomes a law. So the first step is preparation of the bill. Second, first reading. Third, committee consideration or action. Fourth, second reading. Fifth, third reading. Sixth, transmittal of the approved bill to the Senate. Seventh, Senate action on approved bill of the House. 8. Conference committee. 9. Transmittal of the bill to the President. 10. Presidential action on the bill. 11. Action on approved bill. And lastly, 12. Action on vetoed bill so the next one is law law refers to statutes which are the written enactments of the legislature governing the relations of the people among themselves or between them and the government and its agencies moreover the law is a system of rules developed by a society or government to deal with crimes, business, agreements, and social relationships. The law can also be used to refer to the people who work in this system. 
The term law is used to refer to a specific branch of the law, such as criminal law or corporate law. The Senate and its composition. The Senate shall be composed of 24 senators who shall be elected at large by the qualified voters of the Philippines, as may be provided by law. In the Senate, the officers are the Senate President, Senate President Pro Tempore, Majority Floor Leader, Minority Floor Leader, Senate Secretary, and the Senate Sergeant at Arms, who shall be elected by the Senators from among the employees and staff of the Senate. The House of Representatives and its composition. The House of Representatives shall be composed of not more than 250 unless others were fixed by law, 20% of whom must be party list representatives. In House of Representatives, the highest position is the Speaker, followed by the Deputy Speakers, next is the Majority Floor Leader, and then Minority Floor Leader, Secretary General, and Sergeant at Arms. Next is the Senate and its qualifications. So the first qualifications is you must be a naturally born citizen of the Philippines. Second, at least 35 years old. Third, you must be able to read and write. Of course, so that you can be effective in making laws. Fourth, a registered voter. Fifth, a resident of the Philippines for not less than two years before the election day. Moving on to the House of Representatives and its qualification. The first qualification is that you must be a naturally born citizen of the Philippines just like on the House of Senate. Second, at least 25 years old. So in the House of Representatives, you must be at least 25 years old while on the Senate, you must be at least 35 years old. Third, is able to read and write, of course. Fourth, Except the party list representatives, a registered voter in the district where he or she shall be elected. Fifth, a resident thereof, not less than one year preceding the day of elections. Next, the Senate and its election and terms of office. First, regular election of senators shall be held unless otherwise provided by law on second monday of may so the election for the senators held on the second monday of the month of may second the term of office is six years and shall commence unless otherwise provided by law at noon at the 30th day of June next following their election. Third, there is no limit for a senator to be elected provided it is not consecutive for more than two terms. The House of Representatives and its election and term of office. Members of the House of the Representatives shall be elected for term of three years and cannot be elected for more than three consecutive terms. Regular election is held simultaneously with that of the Senators. 
Taxation The Legislative Department consists of the Congress of the Philippines. The Congress is a general term for both the House of Representatives and the Senate of the Philippines. It is Congress where legislative power is vested. This means that they have the power to make laws and to amend or repeal to them. Taxation is the act of levying or imposing a tax by a taxing authority. Taxes include income, capital gains, or state. Taxes are levied in almost every country of the world, primarily to raise revenue for government expenditures, although they serve other purposes as well. Taxes are enforced proportional contributions from persons and property levied by the state by virtue of its sovereignty. Third, for the support of the government. Fourth, for public needs. Taxes are paid by every citizen and that includes you. However, not everyone is required to file an income tax return each year. The amount of income that you can earn before you are required to file a tax return also depends on the type of income like your age and your filing status. Article 6, Section 28 Number 1. The rule of taxation shall be uniform and equitable. The Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. The government is the one in charge to manage the taxes and to avoid corruption. Second, the Congress may, by law, authorize the President to fix within a specified limits and subject to such limitations and restrictions as it may impose tariff rates, import and export quotas, tonnage and wharfage, dues, and other duties are imposed within the framework of the National Development Program of the government. This is how the government is spent the taxes on. Third, not all, not all profitable situations are allowed to pay taxes and this include the following. Charitable institutions, churches, and parsonages, or convents, appurtenant, derto, mosques, non-profit cemeteries, and all lands, buildings, and improvements actually directly and exclusively used for religions, charitable, or educational purposes shall be exempt from taxation. Taxation in the Philippines History Buwis is the Tagalog word of tax. The encomienda was a Spanish labor system that rewarded conquerors with the labor of particular groups of conquered non-Christian people. The laborers were provided with benefits by the conquerors for whom they labored, the Catholic religion being a principal benefit. Cedula means community tax certificate is issued to a person or corporation upon payment of the community task. It is the document issued to Filipinos upon payment of a residence task. Article 6, Executive Department, the law enforcer and implementor. Executive power is the power to administer the laws, which means carrying them into practical operation and enforcing them their due observance. It is part of the government that reinforce law and has responsibility for the governance of a state. They are supposed to put the laws into actions. The executive provides crisis leadership. Crisis leadership is the process of responding to an organization's challenges and preventing them from occurring in the future. Second, broad direction of national policy. The national policy must always have a goal and objective to fulfill and protect the people. Third, support for its policy direction and its policies. Fourth, national anthem and the national flag are the symbols of Philippines unity. Fifth, budget for the government. Budget for the government is very limited and generously given to every infrastructure to build and to help the poor in times of need. The executive functions. First is as head of the state. Second, as party leaders, leaders. Third, as commander in chief. Fourth, as chief diplomat. And lastly, as chief legislator. These are the positions given to political person to manage more of the country's assets. Qualifications of a president or a vice president. 
He or she should be a natural-born citizen of the Philippines. Second, a registered voter. Three, able to read and write. Fourth, at least 40 years of age on the day of the election. And lastly, a resident of the Philippines for at least 10 years immediately preceding such election. The President of the Republic of the Philippines The President is the highest officer of the country. He has the power of the sword. The President is the head of the state and head of the government. The President leads the executive branch of the Philippine government. The Vice President of the Republic of the Philippines. He or she is the second highest executive official of the Philippine government. He or she is the first in line in the presidential line of succession. And he or she will become the new president when the incumbent president died, resigned, or removed by impeachment. Now we have the powers of the president. First power is the appointing power written in the Article 7, Section 16. The appointing power ng president is kaya niya mag-appoint ng kahit sino sa pwesto. Not until mag-disagree or it is approved ng Congress kung sino man yung in-appoint niya. But anyone can be appointed. Second power is the controlling power written under Article 7, Section 17. Meron siyang control over executive offices, bureaus, at iba pang other offices. Kung saan may karapatan siyang tingnan if the the laws are being obeyed or executed faithfully. This controlling power includes the reconstruction and reconfiguration of offices. Third power is the military power written under Article 7, Section 18. He is considered to be the commander-in-chief in both army and navy. Fourth power is pardoning power written in Article 14, Section 19. Uh, this power is the ability to resolve the problems or resolve both conviction and sentence, not unless may impeach siya while may kaso siya or may mga sentences na pinapataw sa kanya. Contract power written under Article 7, Section 20. This power is the ability to have a contract with foreign countries in many reasons. That includes borrowing of money or loans from other countries. Number 6. Treaty making power written in under Article 7, Section 21. Usually, treaty are made by the Senate. Now, um, the President also has the power to make treaty kapag inalaw siya ng Senate na magkaroon ng agreement with other countries. Number 7. Budgetary power, which is written under Article 7, Section 22. So the President has the power to put annual budget sa mga agencies or para saan yung budget na yun. He will also plan kung sa isang taon saan pupunta yung budget. But overall, sa budgetary power, uh, the president has the power to set how much or set um, the amount. Informing power written under Article 7, Section 23. One of the examples of this power is 
the sauna or the state of the nation address of the president done twice, at least twice a year. The history of the agrarian reform in the Philippines, the pre-colonial and Spanish colonization period, the American period, Term of President Manuel El Quezon, Term of President Manuel Rojas, Term of President El Pillo Quirino, Term of President Magsaysay and Makapagal, Term of President Marcos, and the Term of President Aquino. So let us proceed to the Article 8, Judicial Department. The Organization of Courts, the Regular Courts and the Special Courts. Regular courts includes the Court of Appeal, the Regional Trial Courts, and the Municipal Trial Courts, while Special Courts includes Court of Tax Appeals, Sandigan Bayan, Quasi-Judicial Agencies, and the Sharia Courts. So this is the Judiciary Branch headed by the Supreme Court. Under the Supreme Court, we have three courts, namely Court of Appeals, Sandigan Bayan, and Court of Tax Appeals. Under Court of Appeals, we have Regional Trial Courts and Sharia District Courts. Under this is Sharia's Circuit Courts. But what lays under Regional Trial Courts are Metropolitan Trial Courts, Municipal Trial Courts in Cities, Municipal Trial Courts and Municipal Circuit Trial Courts Composition of Supreme Court The Supreme Court shall be composed of a Chief Justice and 14 Associate Justices. It may sit them back or in its discretion in division of 3, 5, or 7 members. Any vacancy shall be, f be filled within 90 days from the occurrence thereof. The Supreme Court may sit in bank or in divisions of three, five, or seven members. The different sizes of the divisions would indicate the relative importance of the case being held. Powers of Supreme Court Exercise of original jurisdiction over cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, and over petitions for certiorari prohibition, Mandamus Coaranto and Habeas Corpus. Certiari is a writ from the higher court to a lower court requesting a transcription proceeding of a case for review. <coughs> Prohibition is a writ by which a su superior court commands a lower court to desist from further proceeding in an action matter. Mandamus is a writ issued by a superior court ordering a lower court, a public official, or a body to perform a special duty. Coaranto is an action for usurpation of, an, of office or franchise against an individual or a corporation. Second, review, revise, reverse, modify, or affirm on appeal or certiorari as the law or the rules of court may provide final judgments and orders of lower court sin. All cases in which the constitutionality or validity of any tre treaty, treaty, international or executive or agreement, law, presidential decree, proclamation, other, instruction, ordinance, or regulation is in question. All cases involving the legality of any tax, impose, assessment, or toll, or any penalty imposed in relation to All cases in which the jurisdiction of any lower court is in issue. <clears throat> All criminal cases in which the penalty imposed is reclation, perpetua, or higher. All cases in which only an error or question of law is involved. Number 3. 
assign temporarily judges of lower courts to other stations as public interest may require. Such temporary assignment shall not exceed six months without the consent of the judge concerned. 4. Order a change of venue or place of, of trial to avoid a miscarriage of justice. 5. Appoint all officials and employees of the judiciary in accordance with the civil service law. Powers of Supreme Court Promulgate rules concerning the protection and enforcement of constitutional rights leading practice and procedures in all courts. The admission to practice of law, the integrated bar, and the legal assistance to the underprivileged. Such rules shall provide a simplified and expensive procedures toward a speedy of to the toward a speedy disposition of cases shall be uniform for all courts of the same grade and shall not diminish, increase, or modify substantive, substantive rights. Rules of procedures of special courts and quasi-judicial bodies shall remain effective unless disapproved by the Supreme Court. Judicial Powers 1. Exclusive power to pass judgment on original jurisdiction. 2. Power to overrule lower courts' decisions. 3. Power to assign judges. 4. Power to change the venue of trial. 5. Rulemaking power. Qualifications of the members of the Supreme Court. No person shall be appointed member of the Supreme Court or any lower collegiate court unless he is a natural-born citizen of the Philippines must be the last 40 years of age, must have been for 15 years or more, a judge of a lower court or engage in the practice of law in the Philippines. Appointments of the Members of the Judiciary The members of the Supreme Court and judges of lower courts shall be appointed by the President from a list of at least three nominees preferred by the Judicial and Bar Council for every vacancy. Such appointments need no confirmation. For the lower courts, the President shall issue the pre appointment within 90 days from the submission of the list. Thus, it has been mandated that the Judicial and Bar Council shall have the principal function of nominating appointments to the judi Judiciary. The Justices of the Supreme Court the Court of Appeals, the Sandigan Bayan and the Judges of the Lower Courts, and the Ombudsman and his deputies shall, in addition to other requirements, be appointed by the President of the Philippines from a list of at least three nominees proposed by the Judicial and Bar Council for every vacancy. Only those nominated by the Council in a list to be officially transmitted to the President may be appointed by the latter as justices or judges or as ombudsman or deputy ombudsman. Tenure of judges. The members of the Supreme Court and judges of the lower court shall hold office during good behavior until they reach the age of 70 years or become inca incapacitated to discharge the duties of their office. The Supreme Court and bank shall have the power to discipline judges of lower courts or order their dismissal by a vote of majority of the members who actually took part in the deliberations on the issues in the case and voted in person in their own. And that will be all. Thank you. For the summary of our report, we talk about the preamble and <clears throat> the seven articles under the 1987 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. 
1987 Constitution established a representative democracy with power divided among three separate and independent branches of government. The executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. That's all for our report and thank you for listening.